Ladies and gentlemen, the event will begin shortly. Please kindly ensure your mic is muted to ensure the smooth flow of the seminar. For your information, the evaluation form will be given at the end of the seminar. So, sit back and enjoy the presentations from our lovely fourth year TESOL students. Also, there will be a Q&A session after each presentation. Dear fellow participants, you may post your question in the chat box. Your queries are very much welcome.
Assalamualaikum and a very good day I bid to everyone. Welcome to our seminar Axio, a seminar of innovation in education. My name is Mashito Binti Yahaya. I am your MC for today. First of all, on behalf of our organizing committee, I would like to extend a very warm welcome to all of you to join us today. We really appreciate you taking your time off your busy schedule to be here with us. We hope that all of you will learn a lot from our amazing presenters. A heads up to everyone, due to being in different parts of Malaysia, our presenters may face some technical difficulties during the presentation. We hope everyone will understand if in these two hours we face some technical difficulties or lose connection. For your information, we will be covering four themes according to this course KPR 3012, which are professional developments and practitioners of reflections, classroom assessment, classroom management, and thinking skills. Before we begin, let me briefly introduce the presenting themes for today. We have Group D41 with their innovation called Teachers Guideline Reflective Summary Writing, Team D42 with their Smart Stick Writing, Team D31 with their Innovation Our Space, A Space to Converse. Okay. Lastly, we have the Team D32 with their Six Head Board Game. All right. I'm sure everyone is excited to know more about the innovation. So without further ado, let us welcome our first presenter, Group D41. The group may all right. Thank you, uh, MC, for the introduction. So, uh, okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. We uh, good afternoon, everyone. We are from Group D four one. Uh, before we commence our presentation, I would like to introduce uh, my group members. Uh, first, uh, my name is Rachel Raza. Next, uh, we have Jacqueline, Wang Alia, Faiz Hakimi, and lastly, Nuru Izahtruna. So the presenters of our group would be me and Faiz Hakimi. The theme of our innovation is professional development and practitioner of reflection. Okay, so now let us begin. So, uh, before we show you our innovation, allow us to introduce uh, you to what is basically professional development and practitioner of reflection. The uh, professional development refers to all of the training, certification, and education that an employee requires to succeed in, the, in their career. Okay. Employees can learn these skills through professional development to improve their performance and eff efficiency. Easy words, professional development help you to become a better employee. Examples of professional development include uh, college studies, online training programs, coaching, mentoring, and also consultation. But today we will focus on this, uh, on this in the context of teachers. For your information, any type of continuing education effort for teachers is referred to as teacher professional development. It is one way for teachers to improve their skills and as a result, improve students' outcomes. 
the point here uh, is that teachers also must learn. They can learn by joining conferences, courses, seminars, and workshops. Also, professional development can happen in informal contexts. This includes teacher chatting among themselves, okay? peer learning initiatives, or even individual basis. So this is where uh, professional development connects to the practitioner of reflection. Okay, uh, note that a teacher needs to be reflective practitioner. So what is it? What is a practitioner of reflection? Okay, now it is someone who at regular times look back at the work they do and the work process and consider how they can improve. Means that in the teacher context, they do the reflection on their lesson plan. Note that being a reflection, uh, note that doing a reflection has a huge impact in enhancing self awareness, which is a key component of emotional intelligence. So this is why the practitioner of reflection connects to professional development, and it is uh, an effort done by teachers to improve themselves. Okay. And that brings us to the reflective practice. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, as you can see here, for teachers, a uh, reflective practice is an action. For example, teacher jotting down short notes after every lesson and contemplating what worked, what didn't, and how to improve their skills. Not only does this action improve uh, the teachers, but also help teachers to get to know their students. Okay, to write a proper reflection, teachers need to follow the proper flow and order. And that's what we call the reflective cycle. Next slide, please. Okay. So as you can see here, the cycle has four stages. Teach, self-assess, consider and practice. A group has obtained this information from Cambridge Assessment International Education website. What caught our attention when reading the, the article on the website is that this cycle helps us uh, make our innovation pertain to the problem that might occur to the teachers. So when our group discussed the development of our innovation, we emphasize these points and insist that our innovation have benefits and incorporate elements from this cycle, particularly at the self-assess and consider stages. Okay, now let us move on to the problem that might occur when the teacher is reflecting. Okay, uh, the first one, perspective. A teacher might have a different perspective when reflecting on their lesson and what a teacher sees in a lesson might differ from what the student sees. Next, even though we learn reflection through a subject, uh, it's still vague. So the teacher might be stuck on writing the reflection which can lead to improvement in a lesson and lastly unclear this means that teachers do not focus on the right things okay uh next slide please so when we create our innovation we make sure that our innovation fulfills these purposes first to develop insight for teachers this is to make sure teachers understand the teaching approach and improve any weaknesses our second point is that our innovation aim to guide teachers to make a better reflection and help teachers to objectively review the lesson as a whole so that teacher would uh, not only focus on the problems that occur in class. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, with that, we develop uh, what we call SAS SAS reflection, which also describe our uh, also describe our innovation, uh, simple, accessible, and straightforward. Okay, next slide. Okay, uh, before we explain further about our innovation, let us jump to the background first. Our inspiration of our innovation. 
we come uh, out with this innovation because from our experience, uh, most lesson plans do not have a systematic arrangement. Therefore, many preservers teachers do not know how to do a proper reflection. Okay, and then we have, uh, uh, we inspire our product from the questioning technique. From the past research article that we found, uh, there's a statement here. Uh, it states that folk and other authors state that several different questions can help facilitate reflection. Therefore, our group has decided that the question technique would be the foundation of our innovation. Okay, that is all from me. Now, uh, I would like to invite Faiz to explain more about our innovation. All right, thank you, Rachel. Uh, so first and foremost, I am truly really sorry because I can't open my camera because of the internet connection problem. Okay, so we proceed to the next part which is what do we provide in our product, okay? So our product is straightforward and very exciting. We have prepared four questions, which are oh, what, why, when, and how, okay? Um, the, the template also offers the standard options for the teacher to circle their problem. And if the problem you had faced does not appear in the options, do not worry. There are a space for you to write the problem. Uh, Isa, can you uh, proceed to the next slide? Uh, next. Our product. Okay. Okay, this is the overview of our product. Okay. So, um, as I mentioned before, uh, there are four questions here. One, two, three, four. And you need to circle your problem if your problem, um, if uh, your problem that you have faced uh, already in the reflections template. Okay, so uh, there are also a space for you to write the problem. Uh, as you can see on the right, right side, uh, the pro the other. Okay, so you can write your own problem okay if they does not have if the options do not have in the template all right so to make our template more effective we also include a 10 rating skill for the teacher to show their satisfaction with each reflection okay as you can see there one two three four until ten uh they are smiley uh right there Okay, so uh, there are also a space for you to state your reason for the rating. Okay, uh, as you can see there, the main reason for my rating. Okay, you, you can put your reason why you choose, why you chose your emotion. Um, and then uh, if you have uh, other important notes, okay, to jot down while you are while you are giving your lesson or something, there are a box beside it uh, that could help. Okay. Uh, okay, Isa, can you um, show the previous slide? Okay. How it helps teacher. Okay, very good. Okay, so uh, uh, for the next part, how it helps teachers. Okay, uh, it acts as a guide. As you can see, the four questions on the template could guide you to write your reflections clearly. Okay, which lead to point number two, which is developing critical reflection. Okay, with the help uh, of the questions, you need to be critical while writing your reflections. Okay, so your reflection would be helpful for you in the future or for other teachers to refer to. Okay, the next point is strategic. Okay, uh, you do not need to waste your time thinking about doing the template or else. It's already here. Okay, we provide it to you. Uh, you can also use the template in the long term. Okay. So uh, the last point is to create a broad perspective. 
because to answer the four questions on the template which is why when how uh, you have to look at each aspect of your license okay to make your reflections more critical okay so that is all for our presentation okay so we uh, right now the q and a session if you have any inquiries you may ask okay so for the first questions here hello i have a question regarding the reflections what are the possible issues or problem that might happen when writing the reflection okay um so based on my observation on our product okay uh there are one thing that i that i think that is our cons uh in our product which is uh the space for you to write your reflections is limited okay it is true we provide the uh the space for you but it is maybe too small for you to write just in case you have too many problem uh in your lessons and you need to jot down all of it okay so the limitation of the box would be the main problem i hope that answers your questions okay so every have a question regarding the reflection template. How can the reflection template help the teacher in terms of improving their teachings? Okay, I will uh, answer this question. So um, by using our uh, reflection template, a teacher could write their uh, reflection more uh, systematically because as you can see from our template just now, uh, there are specific uh, sections for each error, like observation. Or uh, uh, for teacher herself and how the lesson. So from there, um, teacher can take note on improving and analyzing any uh, weakness from uh, both aspects um, i think that's all thank you okay hello all right we have a, another question in the chat box so migashwari asks hi so is the reflection template available digitally yes actually the template that we prepare will be available only in canva.com. All you need to do is search for teacher reflection template and then it will come out virtually. Yeah. So that is the answer for the question. And yes, you can also print out the template uh, just for uh another use okay uh, just in case uh, uh the other teacher wants your reflections okay so you, you can print out your uh, this template 
write down your reflections and give it to him or her. Both can. Yeah, and also I would like to add on to what Faiz just said just now. You can also edit the template based on your own preferences because um, we already put the setting in Canva where you can copy the template and then you can add on whatever you think that is suitable or should I say to your own preferences. You can just edit it on. So yeah. Um, hello. Okay, like, uh, so Rosni Chong asks a question. How is this innovation special or different from other reflection templates out there? So, um, from my own uh, personal opinion about this, our um, reflective template is more systematic since um, we we have uh, divided it according to the um, according to its own uh, how to say um, according to the students, teachers, and students, teacher, and the lesson itself. So um, we also can put the how uh, how how the the reflection can uh, affect the teachers and um, sorry, yeah. so like this. Can you see the? Oh, I can. Okay, yeah. can you see here like what Faiz have already mentioned? So in what, why, when, and how we have um, we have already listed the possible uh, outcomes for each lesson so the teachers can um, perhaps circle it and if there anything else that they want to add they can put it in the other box yeah and the next one is uh, in our template we have our rating my rating of the day so we can put whether the lesson is okay with uh, what we have plan or is it um, turned out to be worse than what we have expected and we have the main reason for uh, for what we have read, read here so we can put our reasoning we can put our um, our statement and our opinion about the lesson and we can put anything here we can put uh, perhaps we can add another uh, maybe improvement or we can list out on our weaknesses into this uh, other box. Okay, that's all. Thank you, uh, Rosni, for your question. All right, so question from Mashita Bentia here. How effective this innovation to students' performance during our lessons? Okay, so our innovations is more to the teacher itself, okay? It is more to the teacher's performance in their class, okay? So uh, we, in, uh, we invent this product yeah, uh, to make sure that uh, that could help the teacher sort out the way they write their reflections okay so this product will ease the process of them writing their reflections and on top of that uh this uh this template uh also flexible uh for my personal opinion okay because why uh, as uh, Jacqueline have mentioned before uh, you can change if if the template uh, does not feel right to you okay so uh, you can change the positions of this and that okay 
uh, it is free for you to change uh, to your own preference. All right. All right. Thank you, Machito. Uh, okay, I'll be answering Salman's question. How did you come out with the SAS method? Okay, Salman, uh, thank you for the question. So, um, as you can see from the slide just now, uh, we inspire with, uh, inspired this pattern from the questioning technique. So, that is why we have uh, four types of question here, which is uh, how, when, what, and uh where yeah does that answer your question someone and then also this question help teachers to think critical critically okay so that can they can see uh what perspective of their lesson plan All right, to add up something, uh, why, okay, uh, Salman, uh, this is question from Salman, uh, why SAS pattern, okay? So, uh, because uh, if, as far as I can see, uh, lesson uh, reflection uh, on most lesson plan does not have a systematic arrangement, okay? Uh, does not have systematic arrangement. Um, we, we indeed, have the guideline on our reflections uh, and we do it by part okay so uh you may not have this problem if you are already a senior teacher because you are already familiar with the format and other technical stuff all right so but if you uh if you are still new in this education field maybe uh our product could help you sort the way you write your reflections okay so we are here to ease the process of your writing, uh, of writing your reflections. Thank you. Attention to participants, we have five minutes to, for this Q&A session. So after that, uh, this group may conclude your presentation. All right, so for the conclusions, um, we, uh, we hope, okay, we hope that uh, your, uh, your messiness on doing reflections, okay, uh, for example, if you don't know what to write on your reflections after your lessons, okay, you can refer to our product uh, for your guideline. Uh, on writing your reflections. I hope this product uh, would be very helpful for trainee teacher and new teacher uh, in the future. Thank you very much.
that is solved from my group. Okay, thank you so much, Group D41. What an insightful innovation, don't you guys think? Because if I were the students, I would happily fill up the form because if you look at the colors, it invites us to fill in the form, it's pleasant to the eyes, and it also covers students and the teacher's problem, right? So, okay. Here, all right, it really brings out the organizer in us, right? That's right. Okay, before we proceed to the next presentation, dear participants, I am profoundly delighted to take the opportunity to introduce the chief guest of this seminar. She is none other than Dr. Maria Shu Hongdi Binti Abdullah. She is the lecturer of this course, which is the one who makes this seminar come true. Okay, so I welcome uh, on behalf of uh, the co organizing committee, we will welcome you in this seminar, Dr. Maria. Okay, so let us proceed to the next presentation. Let us welcome Group D42. Okay, uh, Assalamualaikum and a very good day I bet to everybody who is watching. Uh, my name is Salman and we, I am from group D4 consisting of Daryl, Daryl Billy, um, Zu, Zurin, Magdalena, Pipi Shakila and Izian Hanani. So for today, we will be presenting about our latest um what do you call that innovation which we titled uh smart stick so without further ado let's start shan't we okay uh, it's okay now we're getting ready now okay Okay, so for okay, so for our innovation theme, we thought up of um, we thought up of two different themes going on. We're, sorry, we thought up of one major theme, but we're tackling two different uh, two different issues here. Um, with that being classroom management, okay. Uh, in which the, it is about the skills and tactics to keep students organized and academically productive. And to, of course, reduce the behaviors that obstruct learning. So we'll move on to the next slide, uh, which, is, which are the issues that we'd like to address with this creation we are having. Okay, so one. So the issue that we frequently faced uh especially after going through the first um first teaching training and as well as the apprenticeship three twice prior to this is that um lessons always get carried away and consumes too much time for its own good you see um and because of this and what's essentially the cause of this is because students won't participate voluntarily for example for example let's say i was teaching in a classroom and i suddenly call up uh Ephelia right here um she wouldn't answer she wouldn't answer, so then I would have to scramble in my head for, to, to try and find which students are going to participate in this class. That alone took time. And sometimes, uh, in, my, in my classroom case, it took 
around four minutes to to find somebody who might be interested and usually usually those those students are usually those those overly active students that participate in the class those same five students always answer the same question so those those are the second problem so consequently we are unable to achieve lesson objective because taking too much time and we and in the lesson plan we have so many things to do but we couldn't we, we couldn't find the time to do it because we spend it on the on finding the students so we'll move on to introducing the actual uh innovation the actual product and we'll pass it on to daryl daryl thank you salman so good day everyone so my name is daryl billy and i will be the second presenter for this group all right moving on to the next slide all right first of all i'm going to talk about the objective of our innovation there are two objectives that we have created for our innovation. The first objective that I'm going to talk about is how SmartSpeak is able to help teachers classroom management. And meanwhile, the second objective would be enhancing student learning skill. So these two are the main objective of our innovation. And this is one of uh, the, our main reason of greater this innovation to help the student and the teacher, of course, when it comes to classroom management. We are moving on to the second slide. All right, so furthermore, I'm going to talk about the background of the innovation. So there are a few that we can see on the screen about the background of our innovation, which is the smart speak. Firstly, I'm going to talk about how it would help the teacher to use it as a tool to conduct lesson activities. And the second one would be how we're going to ask the student to be in a pair to use this smart stick. And there's a reason why we decided the um, we decided to pair an average proficiency student with a good average prof uh, with good proficiency student. This is because we believe that a good proficiency student will be able to motivate and guide each other to improve their level of proficiency when they are together while doing the activity using the smart stick. And therefore, the fourth one, the teacher will use the smart stick to answer question or choose to do any form of activity in class. Moving on, each pair must create their own smart stick. When it comes to creating and designing the smart stick, we prefer each pair to create their own smart stick based on their creativity by adding adjective as they are pairing Name. By doing so, I believe, and we all believe that the student would be able to have their own freedom when it comes to designing their own smart stick and elaborate more about their own creativity. So I think that is all about the background of the smart stick. Moving on, moving on to the next slide. All right. So when it comes to how do smart stick help classroom management, I'm going to explain and elaborate more about this okay the first point would be reduce time consuming lesson activity for example based on my experience during my first teaching practice and also my previous ppg i did i managed to conduct a lesson and i encounter a few problems one of the main problem would be the activity consumed too much time and got carried away at the end of the day we struggled to achieve the objective of the lesson by using the innovation that we have created, which is this smart stick, I believe it would overcome the issue that I mentioned just now and reduce time consuming activity. And the second one would be teacher will be immediately have students that participate and contribute in classroom activity. As Salman mentioned earlier, it's quite challenging for teacher to help the student to be active and participate actively in the class. So this would develop a problem. 
by doing this innovation, we believe this smart stick would overcome that problem. It would help the teacher to have an active participation in the classroom. By doing so, students will be able to be more productive and contributed in the classroom activity. This is how we see and manage that, how much the innovation that we created would help the classroom management. So I think that is all when it comes to how does it benefit the teacher and also the student. Moving on to the second slide. All right, so we have here six picture of Smartstick. We have designed and created the Smartstick based on our own creativity. I have here the physical Smartstick, as you can see. At the end of the Smartstick, we decided to use an, anim the, an animal name to name it. Also, someone has shown his over there, as you can see. So this is the six Smartstick that we have created. And this is the innovation that we believe would help the teacher to overcome a lot of things when it comes to time consuming. For example, right, thank you, Sunetra. You found it cute. I found it cute too. All right. So when it comes to this, you you, uh, you can do this by using uh, an ice cream stick. All you need to do is take uh, an uh, uh, ice cream stick and design and create it on your own using your own creativity and give your own creativity on how we're going to design. We have a very colorful, colorful here. So I think that is all for us when it comes to uh, expressing our innovation. If you have any question or any further inquiries, you may ask during the Q&A session. So thank you everyone for listening and focusing on our innovation and presentation. That is all from me. All right, does any one of you would like to ask a question? And it is open for everyone to have your question. I'm going to answer with my team member right after this. So just provide us the question or any inquiries and we may assist you with all the questions. All right, so don't be shy. All right. Um, thank you, Raman. I think I'm going to answer you first. So what inspired your team to come up with this smart stick innovation? All right. So um, basically, we were inspired to create an innovation during the PPG2. Uh, one of our group members observed her mental teacher uh, employing this method in her class. All right. But based on those concepts, we put our own twist on it to create this innovation. So I hope that answer the question you asked, uh, Abdul Rahman. Thank you, Sneidi, uh, the other question. Um, Sunetra, all right, you asked about if there will be a digital version of this thing. Yeah, I believe in the future with the proper budget and the uh, proper planning, it would be uh, possible for us, not only for us, for the teacher to create this innovation and making it available in terms of when it comes to digital version instead of the physical version, I believe the digital version would be a nicer and more productive as the physical version. And yeah, I hope in the future someone would be able to develop this in term uh, when it comes to digital version of this, because I believe the, uh, this stick would help a lot when it comes to classroom management and reduce the time consuming, as I mentioned earlier. All right, thank you. Oh, Ling Swari, all right. Um, applicable for all language skills? Yes, I believe uh, with the proper guidelines and proper production being made and planned, I believe it will be able for all language skill. And yeah, I hope that answer your question. Any more other question that all of you might uh, consider to asking? Okay, we have another question from Abdul Rahman here. Uh, he said, I have one question. How can you make sure the smart stick will make students hang on? Oh my god, so many questions. <laughs> okay. Uh, will make students volunteer for the classroom activities. Well, I have one very simple word for you to, to 
one very simple word for you pairing okay so before each class or any sort of activities that require uh, your students response uh, you you take two copies of the same of the same stick and you hand it over to the students and then those students who got the same pair of uh, smart sticks will then be paired. That way, when I say this here, this example here said, okay, group serene dedication student number one, please answer. So student number one will have to answer. And then I say, serene dedication num student number two, please answer. Please answer this question. Then, uh, by hook or by crook, they will have to answer those questions. They can't escape. So, I hope that uh, answers your question, uh, Rahman. Okay, so Izanur Shefa here asks, uh, my question is how to play use the smart stick and how is this innovation going to help minimize the dragging the lesson? As I said previously in Abdurrahman's, uh, with Abdurrahman's question, right, the, the main idea here is that you pair. You, you pair the, sa the same pair of uh, of the smart stick and then uh, they will have to and then those who are told to answer this question will have no choice but to answer by hook or by crook you know, because when you say okay, will anyone please answer these questions then you will most certainly will not get any sort of response whatsoever from students unless you want to rely on the same five very talkative students in your classroom. So, yeah, I hope that's clear. Uh, any other questions? Uh, I have a few to add uh, regarding the answer by Sama just now, answering Izano Shifa. All right, uh, by the way, the teacher do have the copy of the uh, of our innovation and yeah i hope that would answer your question and meanwhile uh how about the others if you have any question just put your question in the chat box or you may ask all right so don't be shy we are here to answer all of you Okay, so Mashito is here ask out of four English skills, which is the most suitable to be implemented during or uh, using your innovation? Uh, I believe it's talking. It's a speak. It's speaking skills. Um, you because like I said, it's usually usually this types of activities will have people. Uh, what do you call that? We'll, we'll have people talking about, we'll have to verbalize their answers. So I believe speaking is the perfect, the perfect skill to pair with the, with the English skills. Although it might also like overlap with several other skills as well. Okay, Tasha one is asked, what inspired your team to come up with smart stick innovation, Daryl? All right, I think I'm going to answer that. Thank you, Salman. All right, uh, thank you for the question, uh, Tasha Wanis. So basically, we were inspired to create this innovation during PPG2 when one of our group member uh, observed her mentor teacher uh, employing this method in her class. But based on those concepts, we put our own twist on it to create this innovation. We sort of upgrade the concept that have created by the teacher earlier by putting more benefit for the student in terms of when it comes to time reducing uh, 
time consuming lesson for example and i hope that would be uh, able to answer your question and i think we have Exiliana. someone would would you like to answer the question by Exiliana? okay so how relevant are the stick for the new norm in the classroom well we it, it's on two fronts actually uh for the at home classroom like i said we're planning on creating this uh sticks right here could be turned into a digital copy okay so once we finish for the copying this we can still use the same uh amount of like the, the same concept but but we made it appropriate for the online classroom uh, however because schools are now starting to open and this i believe that this uh this innovation that we created could help alleviate a sense of like complacency because you see um, during the online classroom, I'm pretty sure not a lot of students are willing to participate in the classroom in the classroom for several reasons. Some of them might be might say, um, what are they going to do to me if I don't participate in the classroom? What they're going to kick me off the cl they're going to kick me off the classroom. I'm in my own house, but now we are in we are starting to open we hope that this innovation could be implemented by teachers to, to say um you know those people who don't participate much in the online classroom okay so this is your penance please answer these questions when i call your names okay okay so that's the relevance to, to the sticks All right, so thank you, Salman, for answering. I think we have a few more minutes for our Q&A session. If you have any more questions, I believe you may ask in the chat box, All right? Okay, we have another quest, another two questions. <laughs> um, okay, can the smart stick be reused for other classes? Would you like to answer that, Daryl? All right, so I'm going to ans uh, answer that. All right, uh, thank you, uh, Ifiliana, for your question. Yes, it can be used for other classes as long as the teacher and also the student would be able to understand the guidelines on how to use it and uh, when to use it then it won't be any problem for me uh, for other classes to use this uh, innovation as well in their class not only in uh, an ESL classroom so yeah it would be able to, to, to be used and conducted in other classes and we have Sunetra's question here um, behind choosing what was the reasoning behind choosing sticks as opposed to other forms of material? Was it for practicality? Yes, it is for practicality. Let me tell you why. Uh, because these these sticks, when, when you purchase like a a plastic worth of it, I don't know about the gross about the what do you call that? The RRP in your the recommended retail price at your local shops, but I purchased these sticks in two bags, and those two bags cost around seven ringgit, and it comes in a bag of combined together. It it's thirty sticks put all together, so it is practical in terms of like of monetary practicality on top of that 
these sticks um these sticks uh, can be utilized according to your artistic um what do you call that artistic competence essentially so if you can if you know how to make it pretty then this will be a pretty uh what do you call that pretty practical thing to have in your arsenal so that hopefully that answers the question all right so uh thank you everyone i think to wrap this up i'm going to uh conclude our presentation and our innovation i believe this innovation would be able to have uh, any classroom management in the future and the teacher or the student should be looking forward into the innovation that we have created and thank you everyone for participating and giving your full cooperation and asking questions and thank you everyone uh, for joining so yeah that is all from our group Okay, thank you so much to the D42 for your amazing presentation. What a great idea, don't you guys think? Because while cater the teacher's problem, which is the classroom management, students also can improve their language skills and at the same time can enjoy the process of it because their innovation is more look like a game, right? So... Uh, before we proceed to the second session, I would like to have we, we <coughs> I would like to give you a five minute break before we continue our seminar. So we will see you guys at four zero one p.m. Okay, thank you.
Okay, we're back again. Okay, from the previous presentation, I can see that we have an active participants because during the Q&A session, all of you are giving question after question after question. So keeping up with, the, with this momentum, keeping up with this tension, let us welcome our next presenter, D31. Thank you, MC. So, Assalamualaikum and good day. I bid to the audience of this seminar. So, in this seminar, we will present our innovation called Our Space. So we are from group D31 and the group members are Tengguswari, Sharon, Sunitra, Nur Atika, and myself, Nurul Shafira. So the innovation that we had created is based on our theme, which is classroom assessment. But before we present more about our theme and innovation, we will start first with our problem statement. So from our group discussion, we agreed that the main issue that we had faced is the students did not participate in speaking activity during the lesson. So our group had conducted our teaching practice through online learning due to the pandemic and the most challenging issue that we had faced is during the speaking activity. So most of the students were passive and did not participate in the classroom discussion. So it is difficult for us to observe and assess the students, especially through online learning, because most of them will attend the online class with their camera and microphone off. So it is hard for us to make them speak during the lesson. Therefore, we had created an innovation to assess the students' speaking skills through an online application called Our Space. So that is all for our problem statement. I will pass the platform to the next presenter, Sunitra. Right, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much, Shafira. Am I audible? Yes, right? Okay. So I will be talking about the app in general, uh, particularly the type of assessment that we have chosen to focus on for this app, the inspiration and the reasoning behind why exactly we decided to create the app the way that we did. So the assessment type that we have chosen to do is formative assessment, okay, with a focus on speaking because when we observed our teaching practicum and our experiences that we had with it, this was the main issue in terms of language skills, that students did not want to speak, they were very passive, they were very reticent, which is a very common problem in the ESL classroom. Inspirations behind our app are the AI bots, particularly the one from the EB bot website. The, customiz the customization of bots, which you can do um, in the game, are from the replica site. Um, in terms of assessment and uh, method, it is from an online task sheet such as Wiser and Live Worksheets, and the dashboard layout is inspired by Google Drive and Google Classroom, also very commonly used during the online learning and teaching process. Um, the reasoning behind why we chose to create the app the way that we did is because the use of different AI characters actually makes students feel excited and very interested to speak because you know when they see something that they can relate to, it makes them feel more comfortable and at ease to actually produce the language. And it offers teachers a great way to give positive comments and assessments for students through the in Uh, app report feature. Pass it on to Atika now. All right, so I will be presenting the demonstration of how we want the app to work. Okay, so as you can see, all right, okay, so as you can see, uh, this will be after the um, users have downloaded the app. So this is the front page of the app. So there will be a short intro introductory video all right online classes online can classes be quite a challenge especially during speaking activities where students are reluctant or anxious, anxious to speak up so how can you assess so can your you students your speaking, speaking skills, skills when they don't even when speak? don't even speak this is why this we is have why created our space, space for your space students, for your students, students speak, to speak and for you to assess you to assess in our space, in our space, we use bots where students, students get to choose, get to choose from, from various categories, categories such, as such as Korean as idols, idols, Harry Potter, Harry Potter and Marvel characters to be their AI speaking bot. 
they will speak with the AI bots which they have selected and their responses will be recorded. You can listen to their recorded conversation and assess them accordingly. All space, a place to converse. Alright, so that is the introductory video for the for our application. So they will click here, click it to continue to the app. Okay, so they will be two options. This is the main page of the application. So they can choose whether they are a teacher or they are a student. So first, let's see if um, a student is trying to use the app. Okay, so there will be two options, which is, would you like to sign up first uh, or not? So if they would like to sign up first, they can click yes. So they can sign up, they can click on their email. They put in their password and they can sign up. So they have after they have signed up, the notification of your account has been created will show up just like now. So how this works is that the teacher will give the students a code so they can enter their code here. So they can enter. Okay, so here are the customizations. They can choose whether they want uh, Korean idols, for example, or um, Harry Potter characters or uh, Marvel hero characters. Okay, so for example, if the student choose Harry Potter, okay, they can click here to uh, go to the next. Okay, so this is how we plan the bot to work. So the, the bot will speak to the student and how they will respond is that they can click here and it's very easy, just like WhatsApp uh, recording uh, uh, mechanism. They can just record or they can slide to cancel and they can uh, click whether they would like to submit or not. So if they choose to not submit, okay, your response was not recorded and they can listen to the audio again. They can click and then the, the, bot, will, uh, the bot will speak uh, the conversation again. So they can hear and they can record. Okay, so if they would like to submit their response, I can click yes. Okay, response has been recorded and the next and the conversation will continue. So that's how the, we plan the AI bot to work. Okay, so after they have done the assessment, so in their dashboard, they can see here, they have already completed the task. The name of the task is task for one Setia. So they can see that it is not yet checked. All right, so they can log out. All right, so if, for example, the student doesn't want to sign up first, they can click no. So they can click directly click the code that the teacher has given them. They can click enter. and But this time they have to put in their name. Okay, so it will be similar to the previous one. Okay, it will be same, just like this one. Okay. Okay, but this time after they have completed the assessment, they will click their email here. So the report of the assessment will be given through their email. Okay, so they can enter and your response has been recorded. Okay, so that is from the point of view of the student. Now let's see how the teacher creates the assessment. So click here if you are a teacher. So let's say this teacher has already has an account. So she can log in, she can put in her email password okay she can log in okay so you can see there are two options here go to dashboard or create assessment let's look at the dashboard first okay so here in the dashboard the teacher can uh, add classes okay name your class one checkup for example and uh, it will be like this just like google drive or for example alisa just now was in one sepia so she can click on the class so she we can see here that this is her response okay so this is how the teacher assess the student she can either check based on each of the students response for example like this one she can either type in her comment okay for example, the the teacher can type in any type of comment here. Okay, it's gonna it's going to take a few seconds. All right.
All right, just a second. Okay. Okay, so due to um, internet connection, okay, the app can be quite lagging. Okay, let's just wait for a few minutes. Okay, let me just refresh. I'll speak their uh, um, overall comment. Okay, so then after they have assessed, they can give the report to either to the student's email or the student's Outspace account if the student already has an Outspace account. Okay, just like this, your response has been successfully sent. So there's like a, a green icon here which shows successfully checked. Okay, so that is for um, when the teacher would like to um, make an um, would like to the dashboard of the uh, teacher's account. So let's see uh, if the teacher would like to create assessment of how the bot would how she wants the bot to say. So for example, she can click on okay one setia. Okay, she wants to add task. For example, she can add the task. Okay, and she can name the task. Okay, task for Monday. For example. And then, okay, so she can click, she can type in what she wants the bot, the AI bot to speak. For example, let's talk about interest today. What types of books do you prefer reading and why? She can also add what type of emotion that she wants the AI bot to show. For example, this emotion. Okay, she can also add. So, same thing. Okay, and she can also uh, use different emotion. Okay, so she can submit. Okay, so she can name the theme of the task, which is interest. Okay, code generated. Okay, so the code will be generated just like this. Okay, so she can now log out. Okay, now let's see if the student, how the student will see the report. So, for example, let's say the student already has an account. She's going to do her account, her password, and she can, she's going to log in. So, as you can see, uh, she can see here the task that has already been checked by the teacher. Okay, so she can listen or read the comment from her teacher, just like this. You have mispronounced the word awesome, click on the audio I sent you. Okay, so that's all from our, from us. Okay, thank you. Sorry for the inconvenience. Okay. So now is the Q&A session. Just let me... Uh, okay, CJ has asked a question. What are the implications for pair group activities? So we haven't really developed to that stage yet. Our initial thought was to assess students individually first um, because, you know, while we were doing online classes, right, um, we, we really don't know how the students are, okay, what what are the conditions, right? So we developed that in, we developed that, we, we based that and then, um, we developed that based on that lah. We developed this app based on that in mind. Okay, so um, in terms of group activities or pair activities, we haven't really gone into that. But in time, if um, if we can um, accommodate for group or pair uh, tasks, we may. But for now, this app is uh, purely for individual speaking assessment. Yeah. Um, you asked implications. There are no implications as far because we haven't developed it yet. But if anybody else from my team would like to answer, have an answer for the question. Answer. Right, so for the for question by Intan Nor Ashikin, so she asked, can the assessment be catered to different proficiency? Yes, of course, because the one who is in charge in creating the assessment is solely based on the teacher. 
So the teacher is in charge here. So she has maximum ability to uh, customize the type of the questions, the type of assessment that she wants her students to answer. So she so she can write her own questions. She can write what the bot, uh, what she wants the bot to say to the students. So it's very easy for us uh, teachers to uh, create the assessment based on our students' proficiency. Yes. Okay, so I'll take uh, Magdalena's question. Can this innovation be used for summative assessment or is it limited to formative? Um, right now, it's only limited to formative and for project-based learning because summative can be quite tricky, but we will definitely look into it lah, for implementations of future. Okay, we do have like a few questions on... I guess two on if we can use this app um, in areas where we do not have internet connection. So here's the thing. Um, it, is, it is possible, okay, in the future, but for now, we really don't know because it's still in the process, right? Um, but if students are not able, if students have problems in internet connection, okay, um, then they will be assessed differently. But um, we can... You see, here's the thing with online learning, we all have different problems and even for other digital tools, right, internet connection is a minimal requirement, right, even for Google Drive, even for Google Classroom, all the apps. So to overcome the problem of internet connection, connectivity problems, it, <laughs> we haven't really thought about it, it's pretty intricate in a sense, but our sole um, intention is to allow students to be more uh to be more comfortable and confident in speaking all right um that's the sole um purpose actually um when it comes to uh drawbacks as internet connections and for those who may have uh, problems accessing this app then the teacher may have to opt to uh different um platforms maybe the teacher maybe through whatsapp if she wants to access the student because whatsapp is pretty easy right it takes it takes up less connection um that's that so that, that's a work in progress maybe we may um get to develop this into a both offline and online per, online mode but yeah thank you for the question um so for the question of why do you choose to create the innovation as an online application so this uh, issue that we are trying to tackle is based on our experience from lm from our practical which is we're basically more on online learning. But um, so we create this innovation as an online application so that it is accessible. Just like Ahoot, just like quizzes, those type of application are very popular nowadays because of online application. However, this app, uh, not only will it be very useful for online application, but, can, but it can also be a form of homework where teachers can just assign, okay, uh, download this app or they can just straight away go to the website and enter the code and just uh, do their additional homework there. Okay, um, so I'll take uh, Zayim's uh, question which is can the student reply back to the teacher's feedbacks on their answer? At the moment, no. Uh, it's just the teacher who gives them the feedback. So, but we will work on it lah in the future but at the moment they they can only receive the feedback but um after they have completed the task they do receive a report card a brief report card just like how, how fluent were they and all that based on the teachers um based on the teachers lo yes lo and criteria Okay, Maybe Sunitra and Shafira, you want to answer the yeah, other question? Right. May I just add on to what Sharon has said um, in terms of whether the student can actually reply to the teacher's comment? Um, they can't, like when they're at home and they're using it on their own, definitely. But with all self-learning and with all extended tasks, usually you tend to go to school the next day and ask your teacher. You can even text them and say, uh, I, repeat, I received my report card. I have some questions about this. So again, going back to the issue of how students don't speak in class, this encourages them to actually perhaps speak up and try to interact more with their teachers, with their peers, to get more feedback on 
where they went wrong and how they can improve. They can even ask someone who they feel um, is more is more pro proficient in this particular area of language. So that's that's yeah. So you can work both ways. You may not be able to do it in app, but you can do it out of the app. So yeah. Actually, we haven't really thought about that. Um, no, actually, we can't really reply. We haven't developed that particular future. You see, here's the thing: we want to we want this app to be, you know, accessible and you know convenient. But at the same time, we really want students to actually come back to us, talk to us, and tell us like, "Oh, teacher, I did this, and I've got this report, and I'm, you know." So this also, um, when we did this, we wanted it to be a one-to-one -one session with the student and teacher. Then they come back and then they report back to us on the feedback that's been given. So essentially, that's the idea. So I'm just going to quickly go to Faiz's question. He asked because he asked, "What if the students doesn't really use um the actual name?" Okay, this this goes back to classroom management. This is on you. So when the teacher um actually assign a task, they should or, um assign this task, they should actually um tell the students to create the account using their actual name. All right. Okay. This this is classroom management. Okay. So if this teacher failed to do so, then the students would just use whatever name they want. Okay, this is not on the online. This is not, um, this doesn't come with the app. This is on the teacher. Okay, so that's answering the question. So I'll give the... Um, uh, also, uh, also for the own account, they do not need to create an account because we, the teacher, when they create the um, <laughs> lesson, they will have a code. It's like Kahoot. So they can just use the code to access the task that's given but in future if we are going to go for practice base then they will need to have their own account but like having your own account allows you to see your progress like teachers can track your progress and students can also do their own individual assessment okay like oh this is what i've done this is where i am it's kind of like duolingo as well so yeah all right oh, yeah so for the um the one that Sharon and Ling Lingu just said just now. So there are two options in the application that the the student can use. They can either create their uh, account or they can straight away use the code. So it's based on their own uh, convenience. They can. Uh, so if they don't make a, a, an account, the report will be sent to them through their email. So either ways, they will still get their their report. I'm just going to take this uh, one question from Putri Som and she asked, can the students practice in the app when there is no task? So even if there is no homework task or you know, assessment based task, right, like a quiz or anything, they can definitely, the teacher will definitely prepare some form of an extended activity just for like free practice because that's also equally important, perhaps in more conversational type of topics, you know, so there'll always be a chance for them to practice even if there is no like serious task, you know, because the whole point of improving your speaking is to be just able to speak freely and normally, even if you're not being assessed. So, yeah. It's also at the same time to produce an authentic experience for the mm. students because we really do um, emphasize in novelty and, you know, you know giving authentic materials, right? Whether it's digital, digitalized or not. So that's, that's why we have characters. We have Korean idols, we have Marvel characters, we have Harry Potter characters. So maybe in the future, we will come up with more characters that the students may be obsessed with at the time being. So, you know, maybe they'll be like, oh my god, I, you know, I get to speak to them virtually even if I'm not speaking. So that's the idea here, to, to, to give authenticity, okay? So that students will feel the pressure to be like, oh my god, I have speaking. I don't want to speak, I don't want to speak. It is not easy even for us adults or even for, you know, advanced students, it's not easy just to come up and speak freely without being, you know, afraid of judgment. So, yeah, so when there's a barrier, there's a barrier here, which is the screen. Nobody's going to know what you have done. So it's just between the teacher and the student. So yeah. Yeah, okay, I'll pass back to Sunitra if you want. All right, thank you, Ling Yushwari. Any more questions that we have not answered? Anyone feel that we overlooked your question? You would like to ask it again? Oh, well, uh, I can see that there's two more questions. So for the uh, Afika's question. Oh. Um, yes, the app can be used during uh, if if it is online online uh, classroom. Yes, it can be used live during the class and also as a uh, homework. All right. So for the um, Ophelia question, in your opinion, would you recommend schools to use your app to assess students during exams? If yes, no, can you share why? 
Well, um, um, that question is solely, it's much better if uh, the schools, if it is still online classes, like just like how we are experienced during COVID, then I, yes, I would really recommend um, schools to use uh, our app to assess students during exams. But however, if um, exams such as final year exam. So I would suggest uh, because in big exams, there are specific people who assess the students. So for those type of exams, it should be the traditional way. So for school exams, simple exams, yes, this app could be very useful for, it's very easy for the teacher to assess. Um, just to add on to that, um, for the question from Ophelia, um, when you are doing assessment, when you're doing summative assessment or like final year examination, right, there is a specific rubric, like, you know, scheme for you, for teachers to adhere to when they are marking the students. But this app, it is more to like see the progress of students, okay? It is a continual progress, okay? It's, it's continual learning, continual progress. So we don't really have a very rigid um, scheme to and uh, to assess the students it's merely to see to see them speak to just speak without any confine you know them, them confining themselves so this not this app may not be really suitable for you know the examinations lab. yeah just to add on to atika's point thank you for the question Just to add on further, because <laughs> I feel like I would add, I'd like to add this on. Um, I feel like perhaps the app can best be used more for um, trying to like put student or trying to like warm them up, particularly in improving themselves over time, because it's a very slow process in improving your speaking skills. So I feel like it will be better used as a warm up, perhaps several warm ups with maybe you know increasing difficulty, and then the final exam will be something else altogether, unless the teacher can find a way to like linguistic include a rubric perhaps to make sure that it, it is it is standardized at the end of the day. Because the app it, it is a good app, but it is more for I feel informal conversations or even if formal is not as standardized as a public examination would be. So it's probably best suited for formative assessment, yeah, as mentioned before. And uh, just to add on, uh, we did Anyone plan to, like to ask? Uh, just to add on, <laughs> uh, we did plan to actually um, have group activities like debate, the formal styles, but then it's just that it was because we are using a demo, right? So that was not really possible. But when we do have the budget, we will add on those things. Lah. It can also come under practice later on where they can invite their friends to join them to speak or uh, pair session if they do not want to do the the um, speaking to an AI. Yeah. All right. So we have about one more minute left for the Q&A session. Um, yes, uh, Faiz. Um, yes, we we would take that into consideration and also um, we do change the accents to Malaysian accents and style of speaking so that it, they do not get confused when suddenly British accents come in and they cannot understand. But but here's the trick. Um, Harry Potter characters are British, yeah. <laughs> so we have yeah, to we, customize we'll, it. Yeah. yeah, we'll customize it. Like, mm -hmm. It won't deviate too much from the character. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so adding on to um, uh, Sunetra's point just now, uh, so the future before we end the Q&A session, so the future plans our future plan for this application is that we would probably um, continue to uh, develop the application with collaborations with maybe IT students, engineer students, which are very good in coding, where they can truly make the application into reality, as well as um, including um, taking sponsorship in order to really make this application uh, into a reality. So that's all. Uh, Sunetra, uh, is there any more? 
Um, I believe there's nothing else for now. So just to wrap it up, I believe that the our aim of the entire app is to provide a authentic and inclusive type of environment for students to actually improve their speaking skills. Whether it is going to take a long time or a quick time, depending on their proficiency level, that is the end goal. And hopefully we achieve it. All right. So that's all from us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning. Let me stop presenting. And thank you all for your for your kind words. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much for group D31. Okay, what a journey, right? Okay, what an advanced innovation application. I think as long as we have money and internet connection, we can use it easily in our class. So, so future teachers, you can use it as long as you have those things. Okay, without further ado, we have been to the space. So let us get back to the earth and let uh, let us welcome our final presenter, D32. Okay, Assalamualaikum and a very good um, afternoon everyone. So we are group D32 um, and today we shall be presenting on our theme, uh, Thinking Skills. Okay, so um, my group mate, I can go back to the first slide. <laughs> so my group mate is consists of myself, Arif Hakimi bin Zon Azli and my uh, uh, second group mate is Mashito binti Yahya. Third, we have uh, Ephelia Binti uh, Erazali, uh, Chong Shizyung, and Wong, Wong Honjia. So, uh, without further ado, uh, let's start on our um, presentation. Okay. So, the theme of our um, uh, innovation is uh, thinking skills. Okay. So as we all know, thinking skill is an important aspect uh, for students in schools, um, especially for uh, secondary students uh, who are we, uh, who uh, most of us um, have the privileges and experience to teach, uh, especially during our uh, L1, uh, LM first, okay, our practical. So uh, students' ability to think and answer lower thinking skills, lots and higher thinking skills question. So these two elements uh, are very important, especially as a teacher, where we have to align questions and we have to construct our, our tests and papers uh, in order to align with the CEFR and of course, um, making it into a lots and hots question, okay? So it's the mixture between these, these two type of questions that really will allow the students to enhance their thinking skills okay so our innovation uh, will consist on implementing the six thinking hats which uh, which assist students to practice their thinking skills and allow them to create a wider um, perspective in helping them to practice their thinking ability okay so next slide okay so the problem so of course before we uh, start um, uh, proceed uh, proceeding with our, uh, our innovation we have to uh, actually look into the problems that we have uh, and of course uh, this reflect back on our own personal experience and I'm sure most of us can um, can agree that we have encounter this type of problems before especially while uh, doing um, speaking activities okay so here are some of the problems that we have found out uh, based on our experience so students tend to flush fluster or blank out when facing uh, hot questions whether during the English lesson or in the examination okay so of course higher order thinking skill requires 
um, a more advanced way of thinking and some students may not be able to think uh, spontaneously or think uh, you know critically or emotionally so by um, having this um, uh, questions by encountering this question they are not able to um, how do you say it? they're not able to answer the question so they tend to blank out okay so the next thing is that they cannot think uh, critically in short amount of time or within the time given okay so of course if you are not uh, aware of the element in thinking in thinking okay or, or you do not know the uh, the aspect that you need to include when you need to apply critical thinking skills then no amount of time will, will going to be enough right so hence this is why we create our innovation to let the student to be aware okay and of course we will look more into it we will look more into the process and the steps that we have implemented in the activity so the final problem that we have identified um, uh, they are not able to fulfill the task or get the best result in the exam okay so this is as a result of um, not being able to uh, think critically uh, hence um, having a, uh, a obstacle during their, their task and of course uh, affecting their, their, their result okay so next slide all right so let, I'm gonna go a bit uh, into the six thinking hats so maybe you have heard of this concept and theory before so I'll just brief you through the uh, theory okay so the theory of six thinking hats is the basic concept uh, that your brain uh, conduct whenever it is doing a thinking process okay so um, the basic concept of six thinking hats is that in order to process information and to reach the best conclusion in problem solving session people need to look at issues from various of perspective so what this means is that you will have six um, perspective or or approach in order to solve a problem okay so later we'll go on into the the, the name of six approach okay so in a classroom teachers can use the six thinking hats exercise to teach not only critical thinking but wider range of of style in thinking this powerful method can be used to enhance critical thinking and increase productivity as well as spark innovation and creative problem solving okay so the six thinking hats was written by dr edward de bono and was published in 1975 okay. just an extra facts for you all right so next slide so what are the six thinking hats uh, like I mentioned before we have six different color hats or six different approach in thinking so the different hat represent different cognitive function of the human brain that will be intentionally switched on during exercises given by the teacher or facilitator they want to outline the following hat as follows so next slide all right so let's look into the six uh, thinking hat itself so the first one is white so white represents facts and information so the white thinking hat is all about the facts people wearing this hat look at the data available to them analyze past trends and making insight into it so what this is what this mean is like if the student apply this type of thinking they will look into the question and look for specific facts only all right hence they are not making their own assumptions they are not putting uh, opinion or they are not um, uh, highlighting things that cannot be seen all right so these are factual way of thinking okay so next uh, is the red hat okay so red hat represent feelings and emotions so the wearer of this hat use their in intu intuition and gut reaction to help them solve problems so instinct, emotions, and um, uh, what they feel is going to be represented toward this way of thinking. So red hats tend to think 
empathically and consider the feeling and reaction of other people they interact with. So in a question, let's say for example, uh, the question in SPM, uh, in writing uh, essay, so the question asks you to give your opinion or your 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 feelings about a certain matter okay so if you apply the red thinking hat so you are putting your emotion and your um, perspective toward this matter so the student will switch on their their emotion and give their own personal view and what they feel on the topic and questions so next is the yellow positive okay so the yellow hats you know uh, positive way of thinking so where of these hands are optimistic and see all the positive benefit associated with with solution to problems so the benefit of this hat are able to spot opportunities potential and continue working toward a goal and hope so um, as you can see if the student are to apply this type of thinking then um, they are representing a positive feeling okay so they are continuing in the question and involved in the question in answering in, an, in answering the question all right so those are the first three hats let's look on the next three hats okay so next slide okay so now we have green blue and black okay so the first one is green is uh, creativity and new ideas so the wearer of these hats think critically in a uh, in creating ways seek or come up with new approach ideas and creating solution so you can say if the person uh, is applying thinking skill and critical thinking or they are creating something so this would be the the hat that they would they would use okay the way of thinking that they will use uh, for example if you give an activity where the student have to come up with um, new uh, 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 games or maybe they have to come up with new uh, short story or new uh, uh, ideas on something then this would be an approach for them okay so they it, upon knowing so that they can apply this type of thinking hence ans answering the question so next blue thinking process this hat represent the whole thinking process wearer of this hat act as a chairperson who organize or control thinking process of an organi organization in order to make the discussion as productive as possible. So the blue thinking hat is all about process and all about planning. So the wearer of this hat will be able to um, manage their time in answering their questions and their exam uh, and also managing the process, the way they think in executing uh, and answering questions so uh, last but not least uh, the black hat is the logic and critical judgment or critical thinking so the wearer of this hat point out any weaknesses in an idea or solution and figure out how to avoid or counter them okay i think we need to take uh, five minutes for the um azan okay so i will continue after the azan that's okay. Okay, so um, I shall continue. So um, we have finished the slide. So now um, we have one um, demo video that we would like to to uh, present, and then um, we shall go on for the Q and A. All right. So here is the uh, innovation. So as you can see. This is the uh, board game. Uh, so here I will read the instruction. So before starting the game, teacher briefly explain the six thinking hats. All students take turn to participate in this board game. Once the student is ready, teacher roll the dice and the student can ask teacher to stop any time. All students should convey their opinion and answers about the question they have gotten. They may think about the opinion and answer by referring to the tips prepared and the color of the thinking hats. Students can only pass the turn to the next person when teacher think the answer are correct and reasonable. If the student answer incorrectly, they need to take two steps back and answer the questions. The students who have reached number 21 are the winner 
and they can watch the game. All right. The game will keep going until the until most of the student reached uh, number twenty one. So uh, can we present the video now, the demonstration video? All right. Okay, so I would like to invite Mashito to start the game. So if you are ready, you can ask me to roll the dice. Can you please roll the dice? Right. Okay, stop. Okay, one. So starting from the beginning, question one. So activity one, answer the following question. What is the capital city of Malaysia? So for this activity, the thinking has is white color, which is the facts and information. So can you get the okay. answer? Okay, my answer is C, Kuala Lumpur. So let's see the answer. Yes, the answer is Kuala Lumpur. Congratulations, you already get it correct. So I would like to invite the next student, who is Chong Ziyun. So if you are ready, you can ask me to roll the dice. Okay, you may roll the dice. Right, stop. Okay, six. So starting from one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six is question seven. So activity seven. Let's read the situation first. It is 10 a.m. and you are having an online meeting with your group members to complete a task assigned by your teacher, which is due at 5 p.m. A group member of your of yours text your group leader stating that she has an unstable internet connection therefore she can't join the online meeting the following day you learn that your absent friend had posted a picture on a social networking site from a shopping mall that she went to during the time of the online meeting so based on the situation rest uh, rank in order the following actions in response to this situation the first one is the most appropriate and the five is the least appropriate based on these five statements. So for this activity, uh, it is the black thinking hacks, which is the logic and critical judgment. You will be given some time to read and think of the answer. Okay. okay. The most appropriate one would be D. Ask your yes. group member for an explanation of why she can't join the online meeting. And then the number, the number two should be C. Number three should be B. Number four is E. And the least appropriate would be A. Make other group members aware of the photos. All right, let's see the correct answer. D, C, B, E, A. Yes, your answer is correct. Well done. So let's try another one. So it's the turn for Mashito to play. Okay. Okay, you may roll the dice. Okay, stop. Okay, two, starting from seven, one, two. So question nine is your activity. Julie comes from a big family, seven siblings and ten family members, including her and her parents. She was fed up with the chaotic life that happened within her family. Try to persuade Julie about the benefits of having a big family. So for this activity, it is the yellow thinking head, which is the positive. So you may take your time to think of the answer. Julie is a bad person because... He cannot deal with his sibling. Okay, that is my answer. Right. So, teacher thinks that your answer is not that reasonable. It does not really answer to this question. So, you need to step two, uh, text two step back and answer another question. Is that okay? Uh, okay. So, just now is question number nine. Two steps back is question number seven.
Hi. Hello, can you hear me? All right. Okay, so I have a question uh, regarding the game, the innovation that you have provided. Okay, so uh, the inspiration for the game is from the Six Thinking Hats by the um, uh, Dr. Edward, right? So um, uh, I want to know more about the implementation of the game itself, the innovation itself. Uh, uh, from which from which part did you get inspired into doing that game by implementing the uh, inspiration of the thinking hats? So that is my question. All right, so meaning that um, you are implementing the um, PowerPoint presentation and also the YouTube as the media kit game for the students, right? All right, thank you. That clears everything. Yeah, there are some questions in the chat box. So from Muhammad Atik, how do you come up with this innovation or idea so I can try to answer your question? Okay, so basically, um, yeah, for this uh, innovation, basically it's based on the six thinking heads and where do we get the uh, board game template or the interactive slide template? It's because um, one of our members uh, use this um, board game in her in some of the lesson during her first practicum so yeah she suggests that she suggests that uh, we can use this slide to uh, implement to implement the six hex questions and then uh, let the student to practice the different thinking skills uh, in a fun and relaxed way so that's the uh, that's my is my question uh, is my answer uh, answer your questions All right thank you for uh, posing this question um for Fai's question. The first question, which is how, uh, I'm sorry, is this innovation online or offline? So currently it's actually online, but it is not impossible to do it offline. You just need to prepare physical materials like print the board game out by using A1 paper or bigger. Then you can also use LCD projector to project the, um, what you call the game board. So you can use it for online and offline. Okay, so Faiz also asks, how do we assess the student's result after answering? So we have a rule that stated that they need to arrive at the number 21 to, to claim as a winner. So as long as most of the students can get to that number, so we can conclude that the game or the approach was successful because they can answer the following question along the way. Okay, Faiz? 
Yeah, I also like to, I would like to add on for the answer. How do we assess the student's result after answering? So let me present the board game. Uh, okay, so basically we have 21 questions here and some of the question is uh, like skip to number nine or go back to number two like this. So apart from that, we have also questions. So like this question, um, when we ask them question, when we ask them to think, we will also provide some tips for them to um, think of an answer. So how to assess the answer is based on our, uh, our own, based on us, the teacher, to think, to think if their answer is reasonable or not. Or some questions like the fat question for this, we'll prepare the answer at the back side of the slides. Okay, there are another two questions from Neuro Safira Amani. So for the first questions, right, how can you make sure if all the students participate in the game? Okay, actually, if you are in a very big classroom with a lot of students, you can assign a student into groups. When they play the games, you have to like give time for them to discuss and then they can assign in their own group and they assign uh, a leader or a, re a representative to answer the questions. And then the second question, how would you organize the students to play the game and won't it be too crowded for all of them to play at the same time? Okay, honestly, I think um, we don't think that it's crowded for all of them to play at the same time because since it's actually been tasted out by one of our member in her classroom during her LM1, yeah. Um, we can, uh, how would you organize the students to play the game? Maybe you can ask our member, one of these members to answer these questions, right? Uh, so Hunja, would you like to answer these questions? Uh, basically, um, how do I, how did I organize the student during my first practicum is that, basically I, I use this game uh, during the speaking class. So all students need to take turn to answer the questions. So it's not that difficult for teacher to organize the classroom as everyone need to pay attention to all their friends answer because some of the question I made it like, listen to your friends answer. Uh, based on your opinion, do you think that his or her answer is um, reasonable? So maybe when you uh, use this board game, we can also prepare some uh, session like this so that we can make sure that every student can stay focused when we play the game and that everyone will take turn to play. So do I answer your question? Okay, do you have any questions? Okay, 
Thank you so much to all our presenters for such an insightful explanation of your innovations. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's a wrap up of for our seminar. A link to an evaluation form has been given in the chat box. We will appreciate you filling in the form as it will help us gain data for our report. We will give everyone about five minutes to fill up the form. Okay, thank you so much for your responses. So before we part, let us pose for a picture. Technical team, the floor is yours. Okay, hello. Can you hear me? All right. So um, can everyone open their camera? Can you turn on your camera so that I can take a picture? Yes, yes. Are we done, Isa? Okay. Um, I think Jacqueline will, uh, yeah, Jacqueline okay. will um take another two because um I can't really see some of you because uh at the moment I only can see Arif. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, Jacqueline, me, please take the picture. Yeah. Jacqueline, are we done? Um, I think I'm having the same problem with Isa at the moment. Uh, just um, let, let me let me take with... the picture. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Okay, okay, guys. Yeah. One, two, three. Okay. Another one. One, two, three. All right. Okay. Okay. Three. okay. All right. All right. 
So with that, we have reached to the end of this seminar. On behalf of both team D3 and D4, I thank all of you for spending your time with us this afternoon despite your busy schedule. If you would like to know more about the innovations, you could reach us through email or contact us through Faiz or Lingashwari. Wishing all of you a pleasant day ahead. Thank you once again. Assalamualaikum. Okay, guys. Thank you.